I'm Merle Cunningham. I've worked as a physician in family medicine and public health for over 30 years and have been involved with Cattle Nord since 1981. Now I'm proud to serve as spokesperson for the Howard J. Brown Society, our major donor group, named after one of the heroes of the Community Health Center movement and the gay civil rights movement. I first met Howard during my medical residency. I'd been deeply impressed by his work and vision for community medicine and he became an inspiration, role model, and mentor in my personal as well as professional life. My personal story is not dissimilar to many from my generation. I grew up in rural upstate New York where I spent my adolescence and college years in the 60s uncertain about being different and not knowing if there was a comfortable and fulfilling career for me as an openly gay health professional. In those days there were no positive public or TV or faculty role models. Same-sex behavior was labeled as a psychiatric disorder and actually considered as criminal in most states. During medical school in 1971 while studying the emerging field of community health centers I first learned about this pioneering figure in public health Howard J. Brown. Howard was born in a small Ohio town in the 1920s and on the outside led a typical Midwestern life college in Ohio, a brief military tour in World War II, medical education at Case Western Reserve. He first realized he was gay during college and spent years in psychotherapy attempting to be cured as was typical in that day. By 1954 in search of a career and a more accepting social life Howard came to New York City eventually settling into a brownstone on West 11th Street. Howard was a public health pioneer. In the early 60s, he established a model neighborhood-focused health center, Gouverneur, which was the forerunner of today's community health center movement. Today, these centers, Cal and Lord among them, provide health services to over 16 million medically underserved people across the country. In June of 1966, Mayor Lindsay chose Howard as the city's first health services administrator. Once again, Howard established a public health model that would be widely adopted across the country, providing umbrella leadership over three separate departments of government, health, hospitals, and mental hygiene. In 1967, a threat of outing by a New York Times reporter led Howard to resign this post. He wouldn't put his important work at risk by exposing himself to what would then have been a very public scandal. At NYU's School of Public Administration in 1970, Howard began to develop the Health Policy and Management Program, significantly raising the school's profile. In 1972, Howard suffered his first heart attack. During his stay at St. Vincent's, where his partner was denied visitation rights in the ICU, Howard began for the first time to consider the personal cost of remaining in the closet. He was socially connected to many gay activists and gave financial support to a number of organizations, but he'd never considered coming out publicly. Now he realized that as an esteemed doctor and former government official, his coming out could make a real difference. Many friends and colleagues warned that it would tarnish his reputation. Marty Duberman recalled, he listened carefully to the advice and rejected it. A different set of priorities had begun to assert itself in his mind. The wish to do something about the terrible suffering he saw among gay people. Howard's coming out was a highly orchestrated event. At an all-day course on human sexuality, Howard had arranged to speak on the topic of homosexuality himself. Only a small circle knew, however, that he would do so as an avowed homosexual. The Gay Activist Alliance of New York had alerted the press, but no one expected the media swarm that ensued. His announcement became front page news in the New York Times and traveled as far as Europe and Asia. He was on endless radio and television talk shows. Around this time, a group of activists had come up with the idea for the National Gay Task Force. In Howard's coming out, they saw a stepping stone to public attention, and Howard was more than happy to oblige. Less than two weeks later, the task force was formally announced with Dr. Howard J. Brown as its first chairman. 
Then, after years of activist struggles with the American Psychiatric Association, just three months after Howard's public declaration and with heavy lobbying from the task force, the APA's board voted to remove homosexuality from its list of mental illnesses. Howard later told the New York Times, you get to a point in your life where you want to leave a legacy. In a sense, this may help free the generation that comes after us from the dreadful agony of this secrecy. Howard would spend the next year crisscrossing the country lecturing as America's leading homosexual. He received hundreds of letters from closeted men and women thanking him for his brave announcement and for giving them hope. Many of their stories became the basis for his book, Familiar Faces, Hidden Lives. Despite concerns about his health, he never slowed down and died suddenly from his second heart attack in 1975 at the young age of 50. His book was published shortly after his death and became for years a standard text for middle America to help better understand the gay experience. Today, Callan Lord stands as an embodiment of Howard's vision of quality, sensitive, affordable health care. It strives to provide a continuum of care that reflects the evolving needs of the entire LGBT community and explores new areas of expansion. Callan Lord is a reflection of Howard's desire to make the LGBT experience better, generation by generation. I'm proud to be part of the Howard J. Brown Society a special group of donors committed to supporting Callan Lord. Please join me as a member to honor the life and work of one of our bravest heroes and to support the important ongoing work of this cornerstone of our community. Thank you.